Hey guys, how you doing? It's Joe Doyle here. So today we're, uh, apart from me, messing around with a lemon that I just took off that lemon tree there, we're gonna read chapter three of my new book, The Tradesman Survival Guide, and we're gonna talk a little bit about time management. I should stop fidgeting with this thing here, but I just thought, I've never picked a lemon off a tree before, so when I finish this video, I'm gonna go in, squeeze it into the water, and uh, if, I, if I was into drinking more, I'd probably squeeze it into a bottle of Corona, but, uh, no, no time for that carry on. Okay, so guys, look, I've written a book called The Tradesman Survival Guide. Um, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you know who I am and you know a little bit about what I do. Um, but The Tradesman Survival Guide is a combination of everything I've learned when I was running my building company for 10 years, plus all, the, all what I've learned from working with other business owners over the last couple of years that's helped me become the number one business mentor in the country for tradesmen and the construction, the construction sector. Um, a big issue for, for people who are running small building companies is time management. I'm hoping you can't hear that noise up, far off in the background, which is a, a digger with a rock breaker on it, but this is the tradesman survival guide, so we can't complain about construction going on in the background. right? So look, I've got a little uh, extract from the chapter here. I'm going to spend the next maybe 10, 15 minutes with yourself reading through it. And this is per particularly um, on the aspect of... Uh, time management it's the most crucial part one of the most crucial parts of our business particularly when we're running a small business that may be just yourself plus one two three other guys or whatever the case may be um, so here we go um, if you and before i start if you want to go and pre-order a copy of the book the tradesman survival guide go to my website joedoyle.ie forward slash tsg there's lots of uh, useful resources in the book um, i'm on a mission to make sure that this book can be on the dashboard of every tradesman's van in the country so that when they get stuck or even when they get five minutes free they can just have a little browse through the book and they can take a few things on board that will help them improve their business okay let's let's crack on um, if you follow the work i do on social media you will notice that my approach is usually quite simple and that you will often shake your head and say that's so simple why didn't i think of that as i write this i've done a quick google search for books on toy management and there is literally over a hundred of them have popped up so by now you're all well clear on what the purpose of your business is. So um, in chapter one, we're talking about what is the purpose of the of your business. If you haven't uh, seen that chapter, um, there's probably a video on my page here. Go back and have a look there elsewhere. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So you're now clear on not having your time wasted by clients. I've not yet. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now we will be discussing a mechanism. So in chapter two, we discussed a mechanism to stop other people wasting their time. Now in chapter three on time management, we will be discussing a mechanism to stop you wasting your own time. Before we dive into that, we need to agree that people never really waste their own time, unless of course, if they're lazy or distracted or suffering from a lack of focus. So as business owners, um, you will probably say that you never waste your own time. Um, however, if I was to audit your day, I would know that you're wasting a lot of time because the time that hit the tasks you're doing throughout the day, um, are not what I would class as the right tasks you should be doing in order to grow your business. However, many people believe just because they're busy that they're not wasting their time, whereas I believe being busy is one of the easiest ways to waste your time because if you're not being busy with the right stuff, you are most definitely wasting your time. Um, but hard-working, motivated entrepreneurs don't waste their time. They do, however, spend their time on tasks that are not the correct use of their time. The problem with this is the entrepreneur really doesn't know this and he is trying and trying. He's working harder and harder and doing all he can, but he's simply not getting the results he wants. This chapter will be absolutely life-changing if you can manage to absorb the details in it and apply them to your business. So guys, I would love nothing more than you to go to my website, joedoyle.ie forward slash TSG and pre-order a copy of this Tradesman Survival Guide book. If you don't, I still respect you. I want you to listen to this, but I want you to apply it into your business, okay? So, remember all those books on time management? I'm gonna nail it for you here in one chapter. There's a lot of people out there who cannot function in the mornings until they have their coffee. I see these guys on zombie mode until they get to a garage around 9.30 or so, and they get a coffee into them. Then they get a pep in their step. I'm obviously in the minority here as coffee is the world's most used stimulant and the most popular drink, and personally, I don't drink it. I don't like the taste of it and I couldn't be arsed getting involved with something that I need to drink in the morning to perk me up. My hack is a cold shower every morning. Every morning, first thing, I take a cold shower for two minutes and six seconds. The six seconds is the time it takes me to get into the shower after I've set the alarm. 
Uh, I don't want to be robbing myself of those extra six seconds in the shower. Um, I would actually love to write an entire chapter on the benefits of a cold shower because it really is good. Um, and yes, it feels horrendous. Yes, I scream like a girl in the shower. But by God, when I get out of it, which will be approximately four or five minutes after I've got out of bed, I'm ready for the day and I'm at my most alert. Um, and also, I have eaten the frog, which is a title from one of the most famous time management books which advises us of doing the most difficult tasks first. And I think any man will agree that freezing your cobblers off for two minutes first thing every morning would class as a difficult task. So that's that box checked. Um, although it's not really my area to tell you how to shower, I do know that it is a great productivity hack, a great health hack, and it makes you feel like you're, you're getting a head start on the day. I've included it in here for you just as an optional step to follow. But the next step is compulsory. If you get this right, it will transform your business. So I just wanted to throw in the cold shower thing there because I pretty much love it. Um, and it's up to you if you want to do it or not. And if you do it, I'll have more respect for you, right? And if you don't, that's cool too. But the next one is compulsory. You must follow this, okay? In, in business, every single task can be broken down into one of three categories. They're either 10 euro tasks, 100 euro tasks, or 1,000 euro tasks. That is tasks that you can get done for either 10 euro per hour 100 euro per hour or 1000 euro per hour so let's dive in a bit deeper and show you what i mean you guys all know that i'm a property investor and landlord and i'm out doing deals and pushing to grow my business the entire time um, so let's let's role play with me for a moment here right let's say a house uh, has just been left empty by a tenant and a new tenant is due to move in but it needs to be cleaned before the new tenant moves in I have a choice to either go down and clean the house myself, which I've done many times in my early years, but I don't do anymore. Um, it's not that cleaning a house is beneath me in any way, shape or form. I have no issue in doing it, but I know it's a 10 euro task. Um, it's a task that I can employ someone to do and they will charge me roughly 10 euro an hour. They might charge me 15 an hour or they may charge me 20 an hour. Either way, it's closer to a 10 euro task than it is to a 100 euro task. So, in this instance, I've decided that I wouldn't clean the house and I would hire the cleaner to do the job at a rate of approximately 10 euros per hour. While the cleaner is there, he notices the radiator is loose from the wall and there's also a small leak coming from the bottom of it. In this instance, I have a number of choices. I can ask the cleaner to try and fix it for me, but he won't have the tools and chances are he has never fixed something like this before, which means he would probably do more harm than good. Uh, no disrespect to any of the cleaners out there. Um, so rather than asking the cleaner to fix the radiator as a 10 euro task, I can either go and fix it myself or I can hire a tradesman who will call out to the property. He'll have all the tools and he'll get the job done in about an hour, which I would expect to cost me approximately 100 euros per hour or thereabouts. Uh, can I fix a leaking radiator myself? Most definitely. I have done it many times in my early years, um, but is it a worthwhile use of my time these days? Maybe not. So on the same street where the house is and all this is going on let's say a neighbor knocked in and spoke to the cleaner and they said they wanted to sell their house and they would like to sell it to me in this instance i have either three choices i can send the cleaner down to negotiate the deal or i can send the plumber down to negotiate the deal chances are both of them have never done such deal before um, this is a task that has a value of more than 10 euro an hour more than 100 euro an hour and maybe even more than a thousand euro per hour therefore the task qualifies as a 1000 euro an hour task and as such it should be done by me personally you might be saying to yourself well it's different for you joe your company is bigger and you have the money to pay others to do these tasks for you so well, you may you may be saying you may be saying to yourself well it's different for you joe your company is bigger and you have the money to pay others to do these tasks for you if I'm only starting off or I'm just bouncing back from a setback to, um, so yeah, someone says, well, what if I'm only starting off or, you know, I'm only starting back again, right? Um, to that, I have to say to you that I would have not, I would not have been able to grow my business at all if I didn't approach this, if I didn't take this approach years ago. So it's not as if you can move forward and then change your approach. The sooner, the better you change your approach, right? Um, when I got going with my, um, company insurance works we carried it we specialized in insurance based property repairs i knew from day one that i had to get off the tools and stay off the tools i moved towards a supervisory role on the repair end of things after which i was able to move to a position where i only need to call boy to get the job signed off 
So I knew from the start I had to get off the tools. And when I was off the tools then, I went by to check the job. So I wasn't doing the job, I was checking the job. Eventually I then employed staff that signed off the jobs, which meant I didn't need to do that. It was a gradual process of delegating works to allow me focus on growing the business and it paid off. So take on board, this transition must start for you today. So if, if you're serious about growing your business and you're on the tools and you're doing the 10 euro tasks, like you have to start today. Um, in some way, you can't, you can't just keep continuing on. It just, it just doesn't work like that, you know. Uh, do not clean up after your day's work. I mean, this, this is gonna, this is gonna be like I'm gonna have trades saying, "What? Trust me on this, right?" Uh, do not clean up after your day's work. Do not load the tools in and out of your van. Do not go to the shop for lunch. Delegate all of these tasks to either your apprentice or your labourer. And you can then go and use this time to chase up work or chase up invoices or payments. Basically, you're eliminating all 10 euro tasks ASAP. It's a very worthwhile exercise for you to audit your day and I would show you how you're performing. Make a spreadsheet with the time down the left hand side in 30 minute increments and the days of the week across the top. You can now go and complete all of the tasks you've taken throughout the week. When you have the task completed, it is now time to categorize and color them. All 10 euro tasks are to be highlighted in red. All 100 euro tasks are to be highlighted in amber. And all 1000 euro tasks are to be highlighted in green. Stop doing the red tasks. Be careful of the amber tasks and play on with as many green tasks as possible. Uh, to kind of give a little bit more of a summary, um, a 10 euro task is actually any task that you can get done for free by someone else up to maybe 50 quid an hour. I know it's called 10 euro task, but just give it a little bit of a window. A um, 100 euro task is any task that you can get done that costs you from 51 quid <coughs> up to maybe three or 400 quid an hour. And a, t- a thousand euro task is any task that costs more than three or 400 euros an hour right up to get done. <coughs> so, you know, if you get an opportunity to do one hour's work for 400 quid, I'm like, listen, go for it and do it now, yeah? If you get an opportunity to do a task for one hour and it costs 300 quid, well, yeah, go for it now. If you get a task to do 200 quid, well, how many of these are you gonna get done, right? And is the business gonna run if you start doing more of these? So you just need to be careful and you find a little sweet spot that works for you. Um, I find by operating on this basis, it gives enough scope to understand the process and uh, at the rate of three to 400 euros an hour, it's generally enough for a business owner to sell an hour of his time. As your company grows, you will probably find it's not worthwhile for you to sell your time at 200 quid or so an hour. Even though you may spend time chatting to other guys and not getting paid for it, this is usually done in the hope and pursuit of additional works. So we talk about a time audit spreadsheet. So uh, you can get a time audit spreadsheet as part of the Tradesman Survival Guide book. Just go to the website, joedoyle.ie forward slash TSG. <coughs> and I just wrote a little, little story here. Um, a, a little while ago, um, maybe about two months before I start writing this book, I bought a house in Bally Firma. Jesus, we've got we've got a digger over here. He must be knocking the mountain down. And I can hear a grinder over here now. It's been so peaceful since since I got here. The odd little noise from time to time. I'm just hoping it doesn't come through on this audio. Um, so I went to uh, I bought a house in Bally Firma and it was a, a refurb was needed. And I met the builder down there. And before I met the builder down there, I just uh, put a little WhatsApp, put a message into the group for my uh, property investing clients. So um, I've got property investor. I've got property investing mentorship group where I help people grow their property portfolio and stuff like that and I said lads I'm going down to meet the builder on a house in Bally Firma and if anyone's want to pop down I'll be at this address at this time tomorrow feel free to pop down the guys come down especially guys that are just getting going they can look around and they can see what's uh, what's going on so uh, we're walking around the house we agreed the scope of works and I'm chatting away to the builder a guy called Davey excellent builder right never let me down it's great working with him right and uh, he wanted me to do kind of a second walk around with him and I just said, Davey. And um, my buddy Max was with me and Max is on my business mentorship, my property mentorship uh, program. So he was next to, he was next to me there and uh, I said, um, Davey's asked me all these questions. I says, Davey, can I stop you there? I says, the answer to any question that you have for me is yes. Just plow on, get it done. Whatever you think is the best decision to make, I'll roll with that. If it's not the right decision, I'll deal with the consequences of that. But go ahead and do it. And he's kind of looking at me saying, this chap's serious, right? 
And as I was walking out the door, Max was laughing at me. And Max just says to me, you're not doing any 10 euro tasks at all there, Joe, are you? I said, Max, most definitely not. Boom, not getting involved at all whatsoever. And he could see, he could see it coming across in how I run my own day-to-day business. It was the same as what I practice, is what, what I preach in my Tradesman Survivor Guide and in all my business and property mentorship uh, areas, you know? So don't be getting involved in every little detail of the business. You need to delegate something straight away. I've put a note here, just examples of 10 euro tasks. So examples of 10 euro tasks will be cleaning your office, cutting the grass, making bank lodgements, but having checks there, because if it's cash that you have to lodge the bank, you might go down yourself. Doing the postage, ordering stationery, washing your car or your van, going to buy lunch, cleaning up on site, loading up tools, doing your own bookkeeping, doing your own invoicing, preparing payroll. They're all examples of 10 euro tasks. Examples of 100 euro tasks are being on the tools, checking the bookkeeper's work, checking over the invoices, doing other tradesmen's work, getting better deals on the phone, <clears throat> I'm sorry, getting better deals on phone, internet and broadband, they'd be 100 euro tasks because you know, if you spend an hour doing it, uh, 100 quid and we uh, save money. And then examples of 1,000 euro tasks, meeting clients for jobs, um, checking finished work, works, meeting your accountant, negotiating a property deal, negotiating a lease, buying a van, compiling a marketing campaign, designing your website, prospecting with leads for new business, uh, calling old clients for new business, Hiring new staff. So they're, they're, they're the difference between uh, 10, 100 and 1,000 euro tasks. The next thing that you need to be very aware of <coughs> is a thing called IGTs. So when you're, when you're delegate, when you're categorizing 10 euro, 100 euro, 1,000 euro tasks, the next, the next way you break them down is if they are IGTs or non-IGTs. And IGTs are income generating tasks and non-IGTs are non-income generating tasks. We won't dive into that right now. Um, you need to go and get the Tradesman Survival Guide. Go to my website, joedoyle.ie forward slash TSG. And here's an example of IGTs. Um, being on the tools, meeting clients for jobs, negotiating a property deal, negotiating a lease, buying a van, compiling a marketing campaign, designing your website, prospecting with leads for new business, calling old clients for new business, they would be income generating tasks. In fact, buying a new van would not be an income generating task, so we should take that out of there. Um, examples of non-IGTs, cleaning your office, cutting your grass, making lodgements, postage, ordering statements, washing your car or van, going to buy lunch, you know. Um, cleaning up on site, loading the tools, doing your own bookkeeping, doing your own invoicing, um, checking the bookkeeper's work. There's lots and lots of them, right? Um, Go on to the website joedoyle.ie forward slash TSG, pre-order a copy of this book and it will most definitely change, in fact I think that chapter alone will change your life, there's lots of resources, um, download the time audit tool, do that exercise, you break it down between 10 euro, 100 euro, 1000 euro tasks, IGTs and non-IGTs, you go through that and spend a little bit of time and you'll be like whoa. I can see exactly where I'm going wrong, particularly if you would like to improve your business but you just don't see where you can. That's exactly where you're going wrong. Guys, thanks for watching. See you at the top.